Upper Nine, Upper Ninth Ward, uh, and this church here is the Macedonian Church of God in Christ. Uh, this is the, my home church, the church that I was, I served in before I became a pastor, uh, pastor by Superintendent Dave Jones, Jr. Uh, and you can see the, the extensive damage uh, that Katrina caused to this building uh, and to surrounding buildings, but this one would look like it's the most heaviest damaged building on this, on this block here. A combination of the water and the force of the wind pushing the water and uh, weakening the foundation or whatever. We certainly thank God for the help that's being given to us uh, from all over the, the country. And, uh, support and encouragement and prayers and all type of uh, supplies are coming to help us and we certainly thank God for the love and compassion that the people have demonstrated towards us during these times. And, and it looks like uh, the houses here uh, should have or would have slowed uh, the water down, uh, but no, it continued to go and look like the more it went forward, it looked like the more power and force it picked up as it began to and just destroy everything in this pathway. So you see see years of people's investments in their community, in their homes, and, and we love our community and our homes just like anyone else in other parts of the country. Uh, and so people are hurt, of course they are hurt, traumatized, so we need the prayers, you know, of the people who knows the Lord and have compassion in their hearts to uh, remember us in prayer because we may get a new home, new cars, new clothes, but the hurt is still there. And that's only a hurt that only God can heal. We love New Orleans and we love our community just like people in other places. I really take offense to people that feel as though they it took Katrina to come to do something uh, for our community. Uh, we do care about our community. I, left, I got up um, Sunday morning about six o'clock and I saw on the news that it was a hurricane. It was a category five. So um, I talked to my husband about it and I got the kids together. And we left, we left about nine o'clock. Okay. The house about nine o'clock. We gassed up, we got some things 
from the store and then we went to um Alabama. But on our way to Alabama the traffic light was backed up for maybe about four hours. It usually take about two hours to get to Mobile, Alabama, but it took me like almost five hours. I just we just packed for two days and thought we'll be back. But unfortunately we had to stay in Mobile until um, that Saturday, I came back that Saturday, but they wouldn't let me in. So I met up with my husband, um, like close to Baton Rouge, and we went to Texas. When we got to Texas, I, my um, sister-in-law knew someone that was in the hotel, so she let us stay in the hotel with her. And then from there, we stayed in the hotel for two weeks, and then we found out FEMA was um, giving our hotel room. So we got a room under FEMA, and then I went um, backwards and forwards back to New Orleans, to Houston. We ended up meeting with this family, living with this family for five months, for the, not knowing them at all. It was an excellent experience. Both families, both the husband and the wife family, just opened their arms up, gave us a whole section of their house that we were staying in. My son also was with us, and we ended up living with them and having a, a, a blessed time. We ended up going to Gethsemane Missionary, what was the Baptist Church? Baptist Church. Reverend Dennis Jones was the pastor, and they opened their arms up um, to us. They had a shelter that was set up there where they actually had given clothes and food on every day from 12 to 2. So that's how we were able to get a few clothes, um, being, being able to be clothed. So we were thankful for the church that opened their arms as well. Um, I immediately enrolled my son in school that Thursday and he ended up going to Cimarron uh, Elementary School where they opened their arms just as well, the principal and also meeting the uh, independent school district at Galena Park and the superintendent and all the deputies there, they gave us clothes and gave us an opportunity to get in and, and my son started school that Thursday and from there I ended up working out in the school system, I'm a teacher, so I started working with the Sheldon Independent School District and the name of the school where I started teaching is Royal Wood Elementary where they didn't want me to leave to come back home but of course you know we had to but throughout the whole experience we really enjoyed ourselves and we were truly blessed. God was good to me. I would I didn't I wasn't I wasn't dropped in the water and didn't get in the water but until I left I was in the hospital with my daughter she worked in the hospital and I stayed with her till every patient was released and then I went out to Moria Convention Center and stayed there three or four days without water or food on the ground. Not inside because it was dark in there and I wasn't, was too afraid to go in there. And we stayed out there till we got lifted and I got lifted by the helicopter to Salt Lake City, Utah. And from Utah, I stayed there about two weeks and then I went to uh, Dallas, Texas, stayed there for a few weeks and then I went to Houston, Texas. That's where I'm residing now. 550 Normandy Street. And I'm blessed because everybody's nice. But my family's here. My children, you know. And I, if I go somewhere else, I'll be alone. I want to be with my children. I was at my home, which is uh, 4234 South Miro Street, off of Napoleon Avenue. And what happened, we decided to, by our choice only, ride out the storm. But once the water came, we were all excited because we had survived the hurricane. Only some roof damage we had, wind damage. But then what happened, once the water came, I, I live in, I have a duplex, but the duplex was rented out to a tenant. So we ended up going to the tenant. And we stayed there until Labor Day. Then a boat came in our driveway and took us. We were there because we used to leave out whenever a storm is coming, but our daughter being a therapist now, she had to stay with the patients and uh, we wanted to stay with her. And so instead of leaving, we stayed, we were caught in the hospital with her. And we were in the hospital through the storm, but God is good. Uh, the hospital was sturdy and uh, was strong. We were on the uh, third or fourth floor. I think we were on the fourth floor. So and we were safe there. However, we were there two days after the storm because nobody came to get us out until 
later. Did you have food? Did you have food? Uh, uh, no, no, we, we, we had, had food. The food ran out after a day and a half. So we were there. We were there about three days because about a day and a half. We were there about three days. Food after one day and a half, that's when uh, the uh, rescuers from New Orleans came and took us out. We still had water about uh, about two and a half feet deep. We was wading in the water to the bus. My house had a lot of damage. I lost everything in my house. I don't. Ha I didn't save nothing. It's like you just like it's like you had a standstill. There's nothing being done. Um, you know, the trash for us hauling trash. It's nothing. You know, and then there's a lot of people that's not coming back in this particular neighborhood. I think this trailer is here, and that gentleman is about the only two people that's at least on this street back here. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you can walk up and down the street. There's businesses on the street. Um, I think the roadway might be open over there, but other than uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. The water was back here. To the roof. To the roof. Uh-huh. Right. The water was to the roof. The school board yard is down the street where they keep all the buses at. They, the, the water covered the school board, the buses down there. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can look, there's nothing. What about these numbers? What does that mean, 915, 914? Those were the days that they came to inspect the house. Um, after the hurricane, that was like, they came to see if there was anybody in the Dead bodies. bodies or anything in there. That was the date. They came on the 14th. Oh. They came back on the 17th. And okay. We forced that one and through 162 to see, see there's a zero that, that means no one was here. Mm -hmm. And it's in the northeast side. A TFW means what? And we don't have the total idea. We was thinking it might have been family withholdings or something like that, you know. Is this your, this is your house? Mm-hmm. And these houses was underwater? Uh-huh, cool. So what was, what's left, who was left in your house? I mean, what, when you came back? Oh, you want to see? I'm gonna try to the line. Look. Yeah, the line on the wall over there at the bottom, you may can see it. It's oh, kind of like yeah, where the water line. settled See that, that after, line right there? You know, after a couple of days it went yeah, down. Settled down, they pumped it down. And I'm going to always come back home. There's no place like home. No matter where you go at, you never get treated the same, you know, so. Everybody wants to come back home, but there's no place to go when you come back home.